Hello everyone and welcome back to Tidal Gardens and to Becca's tank series. This video is just going to be a quick little update because we finally secured a tank! Yay! We'll be going over the nitty gritty details about plumbing, lighting, etc. in the next video. This video is just going to be a quick little rundown of what I want to do with this specific tank, so without further ado, let's just dive into it. So this is my new tank. It is roughly 130 gallons, 60 by 24 by 21 rectangular tank with a sump installed in the wooden stand underneath. Right now we are currently waiting to get an aluminum sled to put underneath the wooden stand. We're going to be keeping this tank in a warehouse, obviously. And what that means is everything has to have the ability to be mobile in one way, shape or form. In past videos, we've shown you that all of our farming tanks have wheels on them. And that is what we will be adding to this tank as well. The only problem is we don't want to screw the wheels directly into the wooden stand the tank came with, because that could lead to warping, the wood cracking and becoming less stable for a tank this size. So right now we have the wheels, we just have to wait on the sled. Some of you who watched my last video on my top five design concepts for this tank may be thinking, Becca, this tank shape doesn't look like any of those tanks. And you guys would be absolutely correct. I didn't have this on my list and there are a couple good reasons behind why we went with this size tank. First reason is this was the only quality tank we could purchase in a very short period of time. Clearly you guys want to keep watching this project progress and it'll be a bit disappointing if we have to wait a month or two for this tank to be custom built, let alone a few extra weeks on top of that for me to film and edit the video for it. So that immediately took the drop-off tank, as well as the cylinder tank probably, off that list, since those were definitely going to have to be custom built. I guess my eel dream was never meant to be. <sighs> and then reason two. The most requested tank, as far as I know, it was a pretty close vote between the five, was the tree rockscape cube tank. And this tank has potential to still do that, but in a slightly different way. And so here's how I plan about going about that. Since this tank is a combination of both the cube tank design depth and the shallow tank design width, I came up with a plan to kind of merge those two designs together. Instead of having the tree design in the middle of the tank, we would design it so it fits along the shape of the wall of the tank, not entirely pressed up against it because we still want it to be easy to clean around. And then since that tree will be sitting in one end of the tank, that'll leave me enough room on the other end of the tank to add the rock archways that I wanted for my shallow tank design. I will probably only have enough room for two arches, but that's still okay. I mainly wanted them just for decoration purposes for the fish to swim through. Now, moving on to the corals for this tank, the tree rockscape will still have corals with a lot of movement on the top of this tree to look like branches and leaves. And those will include Duncan's, Elegance's, and maybe a torch or two. The trunk of the tree, however, will still need to have some changes made to it. Originally, I wanted to have uh, encrusting Montipora and Leptoceris on the trunk of the tree, but some of you guys pointed out in the comments of the last video that that might be an issue due to the lighting that's gonna be blocked from all the rock and the corals on top. So what I decided to do instead is to cover this in Cyphastria and mushrooms, since they're a little bit more low light tolerant than Montipora and Leptoceras. What I also want to do is add some Blastomusa around the base of the tree. No reason at all, mainly because they're low light tolerant and I think they look cool. So I think that'll be a good addition there as well. Now, moving on to the archways, I mentioned in the last video that I wanted mushrooms to be covering them, but since we already have some mushrooms on the tree trunk, I would want to switch those out. So we're just gonna do a swap. Instead of having Montipora and Leptoceras over here, we're gonna put mushrooms. Instead of having mushrooms over here, we're gonna put Montipora and Leptoceras. That way, the Montipora and Leptoceras still have the light that they need, and I'm still able to keep them in my tank. So along with the corals on the rock work in the tank, I still want to have zoanthids on the bottom of the tank as well. This won't be a bare bottom tank like the other tanks we have here. I want to have a sand bottom tank, mainly because we want to see if substrate has any effect on the 
ugly phase of the cycling process. The ugly phase normally occurs in a brand new tank with brand new rocks. So maybe the sand will season, for lack of a better term, the tank a little bit. So those are the changes I want made to the designs mentioned previously after giving it a bit more thought and customizing it to fit in this specific tank. But now, what about the fish? I'm still going to have this tank be predominantly clownfish. I know they're not always the friendliest little guys, but maybe you guys have some tips for me in that area as well, because I'm dead set on having clowns being my fish of choice, especially the ones that look like little pandas because they're stinking adorable. <laughs> One piece of information I was given though was that I definitely shouldn't get maroon clownfish because apparently those are the absolute worst, but that's just what I've heard anyway. Along with the clownfish, I also kind of want to put in some uh, other fish. I don't know exactly which ones yet. Um, I'm still kind of thinking about that. And then I also want to throw in some snails just to have some inverts in there. But yeah, that's, those are the little creatures that I want to have in this tank. I also want to include one or two frog spawn on the opposite end of the tank from the tree. I've said it before, frog spawn are my favorite coral and I really want them in this tank. And my hope is that the clownfish will host in them without beating them up too much because I know that can be an issue. So we'll see what happens. And uh, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I really want frog spawn in this tank. So the frog spawn also ties into the sand bottom a little bit as well. LPS corals like frog spawn, as well as zoanthids, don't need a heavy flow. These corals are great for a sand bed because a heavier flow would cause this tank to time travel back to the 1930s, meaning it would be Dust Bowl Central. This way the tank still looks pretty and full without causing a major sandstorm. So yeah, that's about it for this little update. I didn't want to be too detail intensive since I have yet to get some extra accessories for the tank's base. So that'll be in the next video. Anyway, take care everyone and happy reefing.